Non-specific immune response refers to a immune response where you don't really care which a pathogen it is. So it don't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a virus or a bacteria or a fungi or even which type of bacteria. It's just the fact that it's a general、um, response to a foreign a molecule coming into the body system. So there are different things that we can consider. First of all, would be the primary defense, which is、uh, when the body is preventing、uh, pathogen entry、um, in the first place. So, for example, we can have the barrier method. So, for example, skin would be the first barrier, so first lay,、um, line of defense to stop the pathogen from getting into our system. We also have chemicals. So, for example, we can have mucus、uh, along the lining of our trachea or bronchi to trap dust and trap pathogens to stop them from going further into the body, and then they get removed、uh, by cilia, wafting it away. We also have lysosomes. Well, this is sort of further into the system, where inside the cell you will get、uh, your you got your nucleus, and then you will have、uh, different lysosomes, and inside each of them would have lysosomes inside, which are basically a bunch of enzymes that can digest、uh, pathogens when they get engulfed inside the cell. So this is a bit further along, really. And also we can have blood clotting. So let's say if you have a cut or you fell over, then the body is really good at forming a blood clot, which blocks the wound to stop any pathogen from getting into the bloodstream.、Uh, there is a cascade, the blood clotting cascade, which you do need to know. So、uh, have a look in that at some point, but we're not going to focus on that one for now. So that's kind of the primary defense, and then we got our secondary defense, and that's pretty much when,、uh, let's say, after. We've got pathogen entering our system. So, what does the body do to respond to that? So, in non in a non-specific secondary defense or immune response, we'll mainly focus on two things. Number one, we've got inflammation, and the other one will be phagocytosis. So, there will be a couple of things that you need to pay attention to.、Um, inflammation, you need to know the symptoms of them and、uh, sort of a bit on the process of how the body works. And phagocytosis will be the key ones. Will be the two different types of phagocytes and also the process of it. And we'll go into a bit more now. Inflammation is the immune response at vascular tissues when it gets infected, and it's quite obvious when you do have an inflammation because there will be some rather obvious symptoms. I will come onto that and explain how we actually get those symptoms in a second. So first things first, during inflammation, what they do is they activate something called mast cells, and these mast cells go on to actually、uh, produce two different chemicals, which brings about different effects. So first of all, they release something called histamines and also cytokines. And they do different things to sort of、uh, hopefully quickly bring down the pathogens. Uh, or at least prepare the body to respond to that very quickly. Now, histamine does、uh, mainly affect the blood vessels. So first of all, it will dilate them, and that, in terms of symptoms, it's quite obvious because、uh, you will get redness of the skin. So it's almost like、uh, after running, you get a flush on the, on on your cheeks. It's pretty much the same idea, and also localized heat. So it just temporarily heats up in that particular area. So having localized、uh, heat. Uh, is quite important because heating inhibits pathogen reproduction, and it's the same idea as、uh, if you have a whole body fever, which is actually brought about by cytokines.、Um, you're trying to make the immune system work better at higher temperatures, and also higher temperatures just naturally inhibit pathogen reproduction everywhere. But in inflammation, it's just a very specific area. Uh, another thing that the histamines do is that they make the blood vessel wall more leaky or more permeable. And what that means is, if you think back to a previous chapter when you talked about blood and tissue fluid, if it's a more leaky vessel wall, it means that you're making more tissue fluid. In that case, you are basically、uh, allowing more white blood cells to. Uh, go through the vessel wall into the tissue fluid and near the cells to actually tackle the pathogen directly. So, in terms of symptoms, if you get more tissue fluid in a particular area, you get something called oedema, which is basically swelling. So, if you think about、uh, getting perhaps a spot or a zit on your face, you will probably see that it was, you know, a bit red. So, hence why you can see it's a spot. It might be a little bit、uh, hot as well. 
and definitely you can feel swelling if it's really bad and it's because of the tissue fluid and white blood cells going to the area to try to kill off any bacterial pathogens that has entered uh, through your skin and also uh, if you got swelling it means that it's pressing on the pain receptors so therefore you will get a bit of pain there as well. Now on the other hand we also got cytokines being released and uh, they do something slightly differently. So their main function is cell signaling. So what they do is to tell other cells that they are, uh, your body is under attack uh, and specifically they attract phagocytes for phagocytosis and I will come along to say what it actually is. Right.